All right. So I got some notes here for Knives of the Avenger. Do you want me to do an introduction now, Jim, or wait till we're done talking? You can do whatever the hell you want. Oh, okay. She's doing now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you watched, uh, or we're going to watch Knives of the Avenger, and uh, I'm James Klein, and uh, we're here with James Jimbo Dubs, Craig Sorensen, and Travis North. And we're going to watch the 1966 Mario Bava film, Knives of the Avenger, starring Cameron Goddamn Mitchell. We yeah. should have started this earlier so we could watch Gamera next. Because oh, it yeah. was originally on a double bill with Gamera. That's so bizarre. Really? That is so bizarre. Why? A... No. Why not? Nah, they're foreign movies. Nobody knows the difference. Put them together. Italian. Well, they didn't, they didn't program double features back then with themes. It's just uh, producers got two fucking movies. All right, watch it, <laughs> or don't, because the movie's just the end. Bean, Craig loved it though. Yep. <laughs> I can't help it if I'm the only one with good taste. Sure. Jimbo. <laughs> <laughs> The Knives of the Avenger. The story of a man's burning vengeance. A man forced to live alone. A man they all want dead. The Knives of the Avenger. They hit dead center. And Knives of the Avenger from 1966, directed by Mario Bava as John Hold, and also co-directed by Leopoldo Savono, who is uncredited on this movie. Bava was brought in as a director uh, after Sovena was fired. Bava scrapped most of the footage shot by Sovena and rewrote the script and shot the film in just six days. The movie is about a Viking warrior who protects a peasant woman and her son from an evil tyrant bent on becoming the king and making the woman his queen. Uh, Knights of the Avenger stars the great Cameron Mitchell as the Viking warrior who had previously worked with Baba in 1964 in Blood and Black Lace, which is considered by some as one of the first Jalo films. Known for being a heavy drinker and smoker, Mitchell's uh, career in the last years resulted in television appearances such as Fantasy Island, Magnum P.I., The Incredible Hulk, Charlie's Angels, and also in the horror genre with films like Toolbox Murders, Without Warning, Raw Force, not to be confused with Ron Force, and Night Train to Terror. And uh, that's it. What did everybody think? It was fine. <laughs> Are you yeah. sure? Um, yeah, it's, it's not bad. I mean, it was an okay movie. Um, I actually really like uh, the fight sequences. Um, I liked how uh, Travis was mentioning how the camera is pulled back. You actually see the action. <laughs> Um, I like that there's no music during the fight scenes. That was kind of neat. Um, it felt a little bit more gritty, more realistic. Um, uh, it was just really drawn out. Like It reminded me of like Beast of Blood kind of thing, where someone's walking through a forest, and you're going to keep seeing that person walk to the final destination, and then we'll cut over here. Only instead of a forest, now we have a beach. So... There were times it was it was drawn out and boring for me. Yeah, I think there was certainly uh, some some padding. I think everyone kind of mentioned that it felt kind of like a western Viking western. Mm -hmm. I still I still liked it. Um, it's I, you know I, I think I'm probably going to give it an average rating at best. Craig's Craig's frozen on my end. Well, you're frozen on my end again. <laughs> So, oh, are you serious? Yeah. I guess I'd have to listen to the commentary to hear how he got pulled onto this and, re and basically hit the reset button on it and cranked it out. Because obviously, yeah, there's there's padding. There's only a few sets, so the budget's not great. There was only one raping and pillaging, which in a Viking movie, you want lots of that. <laughs> returned from sea to learn that his wife and child had been murdered, he struck at once, 
With implacable hatred, he and his men destroyed our villages, sparing no one. <laughs> it's okay. It's just average, I thought. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty good considering the conditions that it was made under. True. But My um, understanding I, the two directors is that Baba scrapped everything and started over. Yeah, it's oh. pretty much all Baba. That there's very, I think if there's any from that other director, it's like a shot or two. That, oh, that would be, wow, okay. Yeah. Somebody picked up somebody else's movie and did it quickly. I think nine and a half times out of ten, it's fucking garbage. Yeah. There are a lot of directors who could have taken that film and it would have just been so boring. But I don't know. I mean, I didn't feel that it was that padded and up until the end. Use a knife. You hold it on the blade. Whether you use a knife to hunt or kill, it'll be caught off balance. Oh, look at that! Am I trying now? Yeah, no, wait, let me show you again. You must be ready to throw several knives, one after the other, without ever taking your eye off the target. Like this. Have you gone mad? Instead of teaching the boy to kill, why don't you help me cut large strips for the winter? <laughs> Use my dagger for kitchen work. Never, woman. Well said. Well, we were placed by the archer to help you with cooking pots. Oh, I was—I was, I thought it was padded in the middle, but that could also be that I was tired and I wanted more action. But yeah, well, yeah, it's been a long day and. Uh, I hate my life, so... <laughs> oh, Jesus. Wow. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the score to the film. I did too, yeah. It was yeah, good. Pretty good. Yeah. Most of the time, at least my experience with Hercules films, uh, the scores are usually just really generic. What's so funny about Hercules? <laughs> it just came out of nowhere. Yeah. You know, my, uh, you know, my experience with that's Hercules. My only, I mean, that's what? the only thing I can really compare it to. Hercules, it's, Hercules. Well, Bob did a couple of Hercules movies, right? He did one. one. Hercules okay. in the Haunted World. Okay. That sounds awesome. It's uh, okay. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Was it before or after Knives of the Avenger? I... I couldn't tell you without looking it up. Okay. I would think before. I thought those were older when Hercules movies were big. When was when did uh, Hercules because they've shit come out? <laughs> I think it was around New Year's Eve one year. Yeah, that, that, that was, was like New Year's Eve. Yeah. <laughs> Hercules is back. I actually, I actually enjoyed the movie. Um, yeah. I didn't, I didn't have a problem with the pacing. Um, I don't have a problem with it not feeling like a Viking movie. I, I'll admit that this doesn't necessarily feel like a Viking movie, but I didn't really care. I was just like it yeah. because because it was irrelevant. Um, it's so western. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know the references. I don't know why they didn't just make it a western. Probably, yeah, well, probably, yeah. probably just to make it stand out from everything else, you know. So, yeah, so they wouldn't probably have these... so they didn't get they didn't get sued by the producers of Shane, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> or either they had like the costumes and the sets for it from another film. They're like, "Fuck it, let's just do a uh, you know a Viking film." Yeah, but... <laughs> I, don't know. I think it would be cheaper to make a cowboy film. You think it would be? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. The cowboy know. hats are a lot easier than uh, all those fuzzy hats. <laughs> oh, there's lots of fuzzy hats in this movie. 
There's a lot of those. Viking Shane, it's called S H A A N E. But I, I think they, I think they do uh, a really good job of minimizing the impact of of a low budget. You know, so there's the one scene with um, the wedding, and the guys come riding in, and and there's the the uh, severed heads on spikes. Yeah. And the severed heads are so clearly just mannequin heads or, or fake heads, yeah. uh, wrapped in in wigs and and but they don't editing wise they don't focus on it. You know, it's it's sort of like here's your gift and 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 you get the shot. It yeah, the you, end. You, you, you get the shot for a split second, but they spend more of the time like kind of showing everybody's reactions. And I think it's smart. So I think there's some some smart editing. I cursed the day you were born. You're not a man of courage, Ogden. A man of courage would not conceive the hideous and monstrous tortures you've just committed. My curse be upon you. And now, and now get out of our sight this minute. Get out! Immediately. I wouldn't stay another minute among cowards. No, no, Shadow. Get out, Ogden. Oh, nice Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. It's all right, Karen. Don't cry. So it's got sort of that chain sort of feel, right? Like a Western, but then they also kind of shoehorn the, the whole like psychic witch at the beginning, almost like uh, Macbeth, you know, the, the witch character on the, on the beach, you know, with, with the prophecy. Um, and I don't know yeah. what, I don't, I don't know what that, you know, what, what inspired that sort of piece of it. Cause even that was just sort of like, uh, you feel like when you, when you see it at the beginning of the movie, you think it's going to play a better, a bigger part, but really it, yeah, it doesn't, it, it's, it's, she draws the thing in the sand saying, this is going to be your protector. And then there's the scuffle in the bar and someone took a big pen and, and drew the symbol on on Cameron Mitchell's <laughs> wrist, you know, because it's like in blue and it looks like a big pen. It's like, oh, you know, they had, they had big pens and. <laughs> and the man. I mean, easy way to get some exposition out of the tie in some plot. Sure. I guess. Sure. He was shot in the beach and there was like six scenes on the beach. If I had one wish for the movie, it would be that they moved the big reveal of uh, Rurik uh, yeah. helmet to, to to the end, so that you have this character throughout the movie. And you know, spoiler alert: um, you have this character, and you don't know why he's you know attached himself to this this woman and and son even though the son and Rorik have the exact same hair color. So at, at the beginning, it's like, oh, is that like his dad? Is that why he's, he's hanging out there? Um, so even though it's kind of obvious, um, if they had at least moved that scene to the very end, you know, to then yeah. sort of reveal it then, um, you know, then it, I, I think structurally it would have felt a little bit better, but that's a nitpick. I mean, it, at the end of it, it's sort of like, it's fine. <laughs> I was the cause of her sorrow. Blinded by my own suffering, I struck down the innocent. Why? Why? Personally, the whole the the kid and in, in the hot hot mom and stuff that storyline didn't really grab me. I thought that bad guy was great. I love that guy. He was <laughs> such an asshole. Uh, he was really playing it up and I think enjoying it that him and 
him and Cameron Mitchell, I think, going at it to me was that was more interesting. Is just the be- those two guys going at each other versus uh, the other stuff. Yeah. See, I disagree. I think I think the stuff with Cameron Mitchell and Corinne is really more of the heart of the movie, and that's what and it's and it's more about his uh, guilt over what he did and trying to reconcile that and actually being in love with her. Um, so I think you need those moments in the movie with with those two. So I, I don't have a problem with the pacing. I, I, I agree. Storyline very problematic in the way he preyed on her. Yeah, that's why that's why my nitpick for the movie is that they move that scene to the end because then emotionally, from for, as an audience, it would be easier for us to to sympathize with him, um, and we don't know his motivations and we see that he loves her, and then at the end you get that sort of like, oh, that's kind of fucked up, but. It, <laughs> by, by that point it's too late because we've already invested ourselves into sort of caring for him where yeah, like, where that scene kind of undercuts that in in the movie so and it would help um uh be, with the complaints that the ending is lackluster right yeah true you're right there would be more uh dramatic heft to the end if they waited to reveal that versus just kind of petering out yeah. So. So I liked it. It wasn't great. I'd give it three cans. It's not the best Bava film, but it's not bad. And considering the production history, right? Yeah. It's amazing. It's well at all. Uh, I'm probably going to go two and a half cans on this one. I'm I'm right with you on that. Okay. I say three and a half. Cool. Oh. Craig loves it. Great. Great curve. I like Baba films. Yeah, it was it was it was fiend. It was fiend. All right, Jimmy, enough with the fiend. <laughs> that little kid was looking down at his fiend. <laughs> Note to self. If I'm ever kidnapped, just stare at my dick. <laughs> it helps if you're not wearing any pants like that kid, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, wear, your, you? wear your Peter Pan underpants. <laughs> Water. Water. Fine. Fine. That movie was fine. Yeah, it was fine. Ugh, smells like trash men media around here.